Ooh, this hand's weird. If any of these was a green source, it would be a quite an excellent hand. We are on the draw as well. I'm going to risky keep this. I'm playing a Karn for sure. I mean, we have three Karns, so let's start the train rolling here. Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. So Karn in the play. Hey, all right, all right. Let's get our uh, liquid metal coating. All right, guys, we are here for match three after somehow being able to beat Goblin Charbelter in the last round. If you want to see how that occurred, then go check it out. Hint, hint, it has a little something to do with Karn, the great creator, of course. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, go ahead and check out my previous matches. But we are here for round three, and that's what we're going to do. So I will see you guys in the games. All right, we have our match. On the play, on the play. Ugh. Oh, well, we'll be on the draw again. It's fine. This is totally cool. Ooh, this hand's weird. If any of these was a green source, it would be a quite an excellent hand. We are on the draw as well. I'm going to risky keep this. It has turn one amulet, and I just like turn one amulet. Our opponent plays Steam Vents Taft Path. Okay. How about uh, turn one amulet, turn two second amulet? How about it? Pass it back. Opponents on a Spiral of Canal deck as well. It's kind of scary. Hey, there's a, a green source. All right, so second amulet will allow us to explore here off of the Garen Brig. That's nice. I don't know if we want to explore or if we'd rather Ancient Stirrings, though, in all honesty. I think we probably want a Stirrings to try to find a green bounce land, actually. Or corn that we can play this upcoming turn. I think I'm into stirrings here instead of the explore. Of course, our opponent can always counter the stirrings, I guess, if they want to. Like, that's fine. Cycle Shark Typhoon for zero. Okay. Is our opponent on a Jeskai, uh, some kind of Jeskai control deck over here? A Karn. I'll take it. Any order those ones? Pass it back. <laughs> we can actually play Karn. While still playing around Mana Leak. Yes, excuse me, what am I saying? We can actually play Karn while still playing around Mana Leak this upcoming turn, thanks to these Explorers, I think. Actually, no, we can only cast one Explorer, so... No, that still lets us that still lets us play around Mana Leak, though. Crumbling Vestige, huh? I mean, we might as well get some uh, mana ahead here while we're at it, so... We'll explore here, of course. Field of the Dead. I don't see a reason not to explore again. I don't know. Maybe exploring again would stop us from casting a Titan later on. I kind of doubt it, though. Nah, let's just play the Karn. Save this Explore and Reserve. I think we want to leave the garrison in play here as well. Yeah, let's just pick up the Crumbling Vestors. This gives us another green mana to either cast a Titan or activate Garen Briggs or something like that, perhaps. Wait, cancel. Yeah, let's just play the corn. Playing around Mana Leak diligently. Archmage's Charm, Tail's End. Yikes. Well, that one does answer our Karn. Let's go ahead and play and explore, I suppose. Ancient Stirrings. Uh, yeah, I guess we ought to be playing that one also. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so if we find another Karn here, we can actually play it. So it is important to float the mana here. No, oh, no, we can't play it. I thought we would have one additional mana. Well... I think we still take the Karn. If we don't take a green bounce land here, though, then we have no way of casting Titan. Hmm. I think it's probably more correct to go after the Karn here, though, as an additional threat. I don't know, though. 
If we take Growth Chamber, we can also draw Tolari West. So I'm going to I'm gonna take the Bounce Land because I'm a coward. I don't want our other Karn to just get Tails ended and then we just lose the game on the spot. So Titan. Titan. Suva. Interesting. All right, well, let's play Valakut and pass. Is it possible our opponent's just playing blue-red control of some sort? No no white? Could be. Valakut Awakening, okay. That's a good card. I'm a fan of that card. I draw four cards with Valkyrie Awakening. That sounds pretty good. I don't know about you, but I think that sounds pretty good. It's it's almost like Brainstorm. I don't know. Maybe that's a hot take. Maybe it's nothing like Brainstorm. Maybe I'm just being dumb. All right. Um, I guess we just play Field here so that next turn we can start triggering Field. If we draw the um, Slayer Stronghold, then we can actually haste the zombie that we get from playing land drop for a turn as well. <laughs> as if that was really necessary. Cryptic Command, perhaps, to bounce draw the garrison. I wouldn't be surprised. Bounce draw the field. That works also. Pass it back. This is going to be a weird game. Blood Sun. Okay. Lotus Field, okay. So they are playing the uh, Aspiring Spike Lotus Field deck. I'd have to assume they're playing white in there somewhere. Could be wrong, but... All right, well, let's play out our Growth Chamber, I suppose, and pass it back. Now Field the Dead is not going to be giving us tokens, I don't believe. We can still tap all these for the right colors of mana. Triome, okay. Pass it back. Need to be a little faster on the clock here so we don't get behind our opponent. Teferi. Four mana one. Draw and discard. Minus to phase out a creature. And minus ten to take two extra turns. Okay. Interesting. This means that they can activate Teferi during our turn also. <laughs> and we just can't for the life of us find anything other than land cards. Um, we'll play the field just to see if it gives us a zombie, and of course it does not. <laughs> Discard a path to exile. I think we're probably pretty dead here. Nexus of Fate, okay. Our opponent does still have to kill us, and if they're playing a deck that's trying to loop Nexus of Fate, I don't see a reason why we should concede until they're actually killing us. I'll probably cut this so it's not so long and boring for you guys. It looks like our opponent is making a huge shark here, so I will concede to that. Good enough for me. All right, so against our opponent, Wilt, Reclamation Sage, and Force all seem good to deal with Blood Sun. Um, Karn seems good to have in the main board. Explosives doesn't entice me. Ghost Quarter could be good, although I can't hit their Lotus Fields. Um, I like Bayloth as a way to potentially clock them as well, just an additional threat. And we do not want Grazers against them. Explorer is good. Pact is not that great, actually, but I mean, Azusa's. Not great either, especially if they're turning off our Field of Dead with their Blood Suns, but... I think I'd rather have a Pact than the Azusa, so... We'll try it like this. See if we get punished. Resolving a card would be great against our opponent, I dare say. Alright, on the play. Fantastic news. We have a turn 3 Karn hand. I mean, I'm down. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Sign me up. Leading on Talari West, of course. Depending on how we draw, we might also just pick up the Growth Chamber to its own trigger. Uh, the Bounce Trigger, of course, so that we can cast Karn the turn after as well. See if our opponent can beat a turn 3 Karn. Amulet. See if they force it. They don't. We'll bog them. And get rid of their zero cards in Graveyard because it's very important. We have a third Karn. <laughs> We're just going to be slamming Karn after Karn after Karn, you know what I'm saying? 
This is literally all three of the cards that are in our deck. And they're tapping out here. All right. I'm playing a Karn for sure. If our opponent it was pretending like they were considering tapping out to force us into casting a Karn this turn, great for them, I suppose. But, I mean, we have three Karns. So let's start the train rolling here. Cycle Shark Typhoon, maybe? Yeah, there we go. All right, all right. So Karn in the play. Hey, all right, all right. Let's get our uh, liquid metal coating. Don't care if this card gets bolted, I don't think. Pass it back. <laughs> they just conceded. Cool. I guess they missed their land drop as well as us getting coating. That would definitely make me concede if I was on my opponent's side of the table. Let's just uh, run it back again. It seemed to work that time. You know, just turn three corn with amulet. A little OP, I guess. They're on the play now. That was like one of the fastest game twos I've ever played. This is one of the fastest mulligans I've ever seen as well. Mulligan. Oh man, untapped land. What I would, what I would give for an untapped land for the sand. I kind of want to keep it though. It's probably really bad to keep this, but this is a turn three titan. If we top deck an untapped land off the top, or even a tap land, it's a still a turn three titan kind of hand. Uh, we can cycle wilt if we need to, but if we just don't hit the untap land, then we'll be just dead. Oh, uh, man. Mulliganing this would be so cowardly. But at the same time, I like to actually play magic and not just sit waiting to draw an untap land. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Should I keep or should I be a coward? <sighs> How many untapped sources or even tap sources are fine? How many lands do we have to top deck here? Let's see. We have two bounce lands in hand. So we have all of these. We have these would even... I mean, Vesuva wouldn't be great, but it would let, let us play. We have, it looks like, 20 hits. I feel like we're just a little too unfavored to hit an untapped land the first turn. And I think if we go several turns without hitting a land drop to play, that this hand just doesn't work. So I think we have to mulligan it. And this hand is much better. We'll keep this for sure. I don't think we need this Summoner's Pact. I think we can bottom a Titan. Makes a lot of sense to me. This hand, I think, is clearly better than the hand that we could have just kept, it, but chose not to. They play turn one Val Cut. Cool, cool. Do you have the Force, opponent? That's the question that I'm asking. They do have the force. Pitching force, it looks like. Force, pitching force. That Arkarn really likes the sound of that. Of course, they could have a Tails End. All right, let's play our Gruel Turf as we want to keep our Growth Chamber for blue mana in the case that our opponent has a Cleansing Wildfire. If they do Wildfire us here, it's probably pretty okay. Blood Sun. That's pretty okay also, at least for now. Hmm. Alright, well, let's just get our Dryad into play. And Stirrings here. Sure, we'll take a free Soul Land here. We'll play Sanctuary and Stirrings again. Uh, Valakut doesn't do anything, actually. So, I guess we just take the green land. Really would have liked to find a Karn there, but that's okay. Pass it back. I suppose maybe we should have taken the Valakut anyways, because we do have ways to deal with Blood Sun. We can just slam a Titan this upcoming turn. So, I guess that way we can search up a couple Valakuts anyways. Assuming our opponent doesn't have the answer for our Titan. They could have Gust or Mana Leak or something. 
Don't know if we can activate Castle Garenbrig's ability. Oh, if they're just tapping out for a blood sum, that's great news for us. <laughs> that's great news for us. All right, well, let's play a Titan. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to play any lands beforehand. And here we'll just get the double Valakut thing set up so that if we draw an answer to Blood Sun, we are good to go. Play our Garen Brig, I suppose, and keep the other two lands in hand because I don't see a reason to commit them. And pass it back to our opponent. See if they can deal with a trampling 6 6 creature. Serum Visions. Something tells me they would be able to answer it. Still would like to top deck a Karn. Land is great for us. Another Titan, huh? Well, let's just go to combat first. There's no reason to play anything pre-combat into a Cryptic Command or something here. Speak of the Devil. Our opponent is not having it. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. They are considering doing something and floating all kinds of different crazy colors of mana. Looks like it's Cryptic Command. Sure. Um, I think I'm jamming another Titan. I don't expect our opponent to have Supreme Verdict in their deck, so... Boom. Into play. Yep. And for this one, we want to keep our Talari West in deck so we can transmute them. But we do want enough blue sources to to transmute in play if we lose our Dryad. So one Simic Growth Chamber seems good. And I guess I guess it's fine to just get a Boros Garrison as well. Sure. And we'll pass it back. Our opponent has to deal with our board of 14 damage this upcoming turn, so. Five mana to fairy, okay. And that one we don't really care that much about. They uptick. Well, this Teferi is about to be very dead. I'm sending both Titans at the Teferi, by the way, in case you're wondering. So that we can kill Teferi even through a path. And this is one of the reasons why it's great to jam another Primeval Titan in this board state. We'll have all of them attack Teferi, and then we'll undo the Dryad and have that one attack just them. And then let's just continue to get lands out of our deck so we can draw live cards. They do have a path. That's cool with me. Yep. Might as well get our normal forest, as we already have our cool forest in hand. We'll get... Field of the Dead, I suppose, and a Slayer Stronghold, sure. And then we'll get Sun Home and Ghost Quarter, so that if we do find something to kill these Blood Moon, not Blood Moons, Blood Suns, then we'll have things to do. Teferi's dead. I think it makes sense. Actually, let's hold on to the Vesuva in case we want it as a bounce land or something. No reason to play any of these lands here, I don't think. Our opponent just has to beat our 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> that's, that's all we're asking them to do here. And we, of course, top deck a land. Okay. If you insist a deck. Cryptic tap draw. Snapcaster Mage. Snap Path? Yeah. Sure. We'll draw a Karn at some point in time. I don't know if it's worth attacking into the snap. They could have Bolt. In which case they can block and Bolt our Dryad, and then we don't have Valakut triggers as a possibility. So I think we're supposed to not attack with the Dryad. Oh, we were supposed to play a land there, but whatever. This way we can top deck Karn, minus for Explosives, play it. Oh, I guess if we Explosives on three and blow it up. And then it kills our Dryad, too, so maybe that was a mistake. 
Actually, yeah, I'm going to start swinging with this Dryad this upcoming turn. Hopefully we don't lose this game by two points of life. Five minutes to parry is a huge problem. All right, Karn off the top. Let's go Karn. Karn. Karn the Great Creator off the top right now. 1,000%. We need you. Karn. Summoner's Pact. I mean, that's a Titan, I guess. Okay. Well, first things first, go to combat. We could also hold the Pact so that if we draw a Karn, we can... Karn, explosives for three, blow it up, play Dryad off of the, you know, Summer's Pack for a Dryad and play Dryad, and then kill with uh, the Valcut triggers. The reasonable thing to consider. Attacking into Lightning Bolt now for sure. Okay. To the forest. Um, might as well. Play Radiant Fountain as well, I guess. Eh, whatever. Let's just leave lands in hand. Pass it back. If they have the bolt, they have the bolt. That's fine. They don't have the bolt. Okay. I guess we don't want to auto yield here. We would like the option to summon pack if they have Ashiok, for example. Pithing Needle. Sure. This is going to name Karn the Great Creator, of course. That's pretty annoying. Well, now we might be glad that we saved this pact for a potential Reclamation Sage instead. And we also have to be careful, as our opponent can just cycle Shark Typhoon and kill us with a shark over a very small number of turns. So, I mean, at some point in time, we might be forced to just jam. Karn off the top is still a, a great draw. Karn. Explore. I'll take it. Um, again, not doing anything pre-combat here. We're going at Teferi. We don't really have a choice. This one needs to get out of play fast. Aethergust. I guess we put that one on top. And then we can explore here. And again, I think we don't actually play the Dryad out. I mean, I don't know, though. That's kind of difficult because we need to clock our opponents to Fairy or we lose to the ult. So I guess we have no choice but to play the Dryad here. I think we saved the Pact. It might be wrong to not just Pack for the 6-6. Six -six as it would very succinctly allow us to deal with our opponents to parry, but I find it very unlikely they don't have a counter spell to just counter our Titan and then we get nowhere. So just waiting until the last possible moment to cast this pact seems like it might be the better play. Baylaw. That one's fantastic, actually. All right, let's go to combat. Path. Cool. Nothing to search for. Here's the Bailoth. See if they feel inclined to counterspell this. If they do, we might be forced to just go ahead and pack for something. Probably still get the Rex Age anyways to kill this Pithy Needle. So it resolved. I think now is the time to probably wreck Sage of the Pithy Needle, as much as I hate it. I don't think we have a choice, because otherwise we will run out of time to deal with this Teferi before it ults. So I think we actually have no choice but to just get this uh, Reclamation Sage here. Kill the Pithy Needle for sure.
All right. Pass it back. At least now we can yield, since we are not doing anything at instant speed. Our opponent could have tails in tails end in hand, and maybe that's why they aren't responding to our creatures and summoners packs. Hmm. Cavern. Okay. Play out our fountain here and just go to combat. Cryptic. Alright, well, I think now we basically just lose. Since we can't meaningfully clock this to fairy. Yeah. Turns out that when it used correctly, Blood Sun is pretty good against us. All right. I mean, I suppose if we draw a Karn, we might still be able to do some stuff. <laughs> Another Teferi. Yeah. Yeah. This definitely feels like a very good Teferi Hero Dominaria deck. Quite intriguing. Karn for explosives on three and blow it up. And then play a land and make a zombie haste it, double strike it, and attack. That is still a line if our opponent doesn't have the counter spell, which I'm sure they do. But if they don't, corn off the top still keeps us in the game, I guess. There's the corn. Okay, opponent. Well, now is the time to ask the age old question Do you have it? And it looks like that they do. All right, well, that was a pretty interesting match. At least we won one of the games, am I right? That was uh, starkly different than the last time that I faced Jeskai Lotus Field before. And it seems like our opponent had very good prowess with the deck. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and cut this match here, as I'm sure it was much too long for your liking. And it's also much too long for my liking. So hopefully you guys will follow me into the next match. This is Redface Menace. Signing off.